and welcome to episode number 33 of Saving Sunderland, the homegrown hero save, where I attempt to turn Sunderland into a top six side using only British and Irish players. Today will be quite a quick episode. It will be a review of the transfers done so far and have a look at the tactics and just review pre-season before we go into our first game, which will be away at Bournemouth. So before we look at pre-season, let's have a look at the transfers in. I have followed the mantra of go big or go home for this season. First in is Patrick Roberts on a season-long loan from Manchester City. I'm following a couple of Celtic fans on Twitter and they are raving about this guy. So he was top of my list when I heard, when I decided to use the, the traditional right midfield, left midfield combination. He looks to be a very good striker. Striker? Very good wing. <laughs> really strong dribbling flair off the ball. He looks like a player who will excite a lot and he was really, really cheap as well taking advantage of the Man City policy of bringing in loads and loads of players, then loaning them out. Very high hopes about this guy. The next signing is a region Duncan Simpson from Falkirk for half a million pounds. He has been involved pre-season. He looks to be a fairly decent striker. He's got a lovely goal in one of the opening friendlies. Real poachers finish and he's someone who I think can be a decent squad player. A finishing stat of 18, determination of 17, teamwork of 19. This guy could be a very, very good player. Next is a young guy from Cork City, Kieran Barry. I like the look of him when I signed him, but he doesn't... I'm, I'm not convinced I made the right move to bring him into the club at the moment. He's only 18, so I don't think he's going to be involved in this season. If it is my last season with the club, then potentially I've signed a player who I'm never really going to, really going to play. But he does give me another option in the midfield if required. And he also can play up front, but not in a really positive way. He might be a, an extra body if required, but I'll probably look to loan him out if, if once we're at the League Cup in early or in early September at the best I'll look to loan the guy out to give him some experience but possibly not the best signing in the world we're starting to hit the big signings now Charlie Austin is injury prone but I really really like him as a striker finishing 17 strong work weight strong off the ball really good anticipation if I can keep this guy fit he's going to score some goals for me a really really cheap signing as well only cost me three million pounds, which I think is an absolute bargain. And he's only on 44 grand a week as well. So real bargain all round, as long as I can keep him fit. That's the big disclaimer. If I can keep the guy fit, I'm laughing. If I can't, then it's a waste of money. But we'll see. He fits in anywhere in my strikers, target man and poacher. He does really, really well. So I'm really hopeful he can have a really good partnership with Danny Ings up top. Worst case scenario, of course, is they both are injury prone. They both got injured. Then that's a problem. I've spent a lot of money on two players and one of them is Cameron Borthwick Jackson. In the last episode I mentioned I had a left back secured. This is the guy I have secured. £16 million from Manchester United which is a lot of money for us but he gives versatility at that left back and at centre back as well. He was on loan at Celtic last season, did a decent job. I really like the look of this guy. A little bit of work technically but those physicals are really impressive and mentally he's quite strong as well. The only things he really struggles with is flair, free kick taking, vision. He's a fullback and my fullback is on support is a centre back and the centre back to run defend. So he covers those two positions really, really quite nicely. And then my star signing is Will Hughes. I had him secured late season, but I couldn't complete the transfer because I didn't have the, the budget available. So I went back into him during the summer and fortunately I've been able to secure it. This guy has the potential to be absolutely sensational for me. Already valued at £20 million. I spent £20 million on him but it was I think £5 million up front and £15 million over the next four years. So I think that's a really, really good deal for us. 25 under 21 caps but hasn't yet broken into the senior England squad. Has now left Derby, so he's probably looking to reach that level. He's currently injured for a few weeks, so that he's going to miss the start of the season. But he's a really, really strong player for me. So in all, I've spent £42 million. I do have a little bit of money left to spend, if I can find the right screen. 
I've got £26 million left to spend and 26 days of August left to spend it. So there's scope to bring some more players in. I've got my eyes on a centre-back that can play right back if I can find the right player. But I haven't got much in the wage budget left. I think I've only got something like 15, 16 grand a week at maximum, which at this level of football is not going to get that much quality in. But we'll see. If I had to start the season with this side, I'd be relatively happy. It's a new tactic, it's a new way of playing for us, so it could go very wrong or it could go very right. Time will tell. So this is the new formation we're going to look to play next season. It is a 4-4-2. The main aim for this one is I want to get the wingers involved. I've got two very exciting young wingers in on loan, which is Patrick Roberts and Rhys Nelson. Nelson was from, played for us last season. He's joined again on the season long loan. We have two ball winning midfielders in the centre and then a classic combination of target man and poach up front. We want to clear the ball to the Franks run at defence, hit early crosses and retain possession. So the idea is we keep the ball and when the moment's right, we knock it long for the wide players to get behind the defence, play it into the middle and the two strikers to do their thing. Pre-season has been relatively okay. I've tried to keep it so we're all playing really decent teams. So we started with Gateshead who are in League 2. Nice comfortable 3-1 victory then before we embarked on our Austrian tour. A couple of draws against a couple of Austri Austrian teams before losing to Cardiff in Austria. Really disappointing 3-1 defeat in that one. Then we played Dormant which we're never going to win that game because they are world class 200 feet in that one before a draw at home against Boca Juniors which is a really really positive result and then we absolutely stuffed Palmer 3-1 away in Italy I chose Palmer as in my mind they were a really good Serie A side but they're actually in Serie A B at the moment so that result probably isn't quite as good as I thought it would be but overall we seem to be doing okay I'm not great at tactics myself so we'll see how it develops as the season goes on. I am trying to learn tactics as I, as we go through the seasons, but we'll see how it goes. I am fully expecting this to be the last season of Saving Sunderland. I fully expect to receive my P45 at some point through the season, and they choose another manager. When that'll happen, you and I can only guess. So we've brought some players in, so we do have to balance the book and allow some players to leave. We have let go quite a few players since the end of last season but haven't really recouped a huge amount of money the biggest name going out is Duncan Watmore who's gone to Burnley for six and a half million pounds I really like the guy but he can't play in the position I want to play he can play right wing he can play attacking midfielder but I'm playing right midfield center midfield and striker so he doesn't fit within the tactic I was starting to train him as a right sided midfielder However, he's 25, he's reached his peak, out of contract at the end of the season he was. It made sense to try and cash in on him. I got six and a half million eventually when it all comes through. So happy with that as a sell. Donald Love was mentioned in the last episode, gone to Charlton, the right back. It was only ever a squad player, didn't actually play for me last season. More than happy that he has moved on, hoping he can get some regular first team football at a lower level. Same for Paddy McNair, really, £875,000 to Brentford. Decent, solid enough, but was never getting into my first team squad on a regular basis. And also let Marcus Bettinelli go, our third choice goalkeeper to Bristol City. Got in nearly a million pounds if he reaches all his requirements on that one. In terms of players released, the main two to mention are Alex Pierce and Gary Hooper. Hooper has gone to Burton Albion, which are in, I think they're in the championship. They're in the championship, so he, he should score goals at that level. He's the type of player who will score at that level. He was a decent, solid player for me. He didn't possibly score enough goals, but did a good job in that first season. And then struggled once he got an injury in that second season. And never really got into the side in the third season. So let him go. No real concerns about letting him go. And I also let a lot of the younger players go out on loan to get some first team football. And I also let also did release a couple of the kids at the end of the season, but they're not actually showing up in this list for some reason. It's because I need to be on youth. 
there you go, a number of the younger players who got let go at the end of last season. So there we are, guys, a quick summary of what has been happening since our last episode. Setting the scene nicely up for the game away at Bournemouth. Second season running that we are playing Bournemouth away from home on the first game of the season. Last year we got beaten. This season, what will happen? I'm hoping for a victory, of course. It's always nice to get your first victory of the season. But we'll find out tomorrow. So for today, thank you very much for watching. If you've liked what you've seen, please do leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. I've been the FM Novice and I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Thank you very much and have a good evening.